that's the end of story. So make up whatever you want. In fact, I'd like some people to send me some creative stuff they've done just to see what other people are doing out there. I think it's great. I love reading that stuff. Who do you want to give notice to as well as the government? Well, um, every police force in Canada is all a member and licensed to the police officers union in Ottawa. It's called CACP. I can't remember what that stands for, but there's a police chief of all the police chiefs. And I've got his name, because uh, you can find it online right now. Um, oh, no, I'm, I'm not going to, I can't remember. But anyways, so I faxed them a copy. Isn't that the Canadian Association of the, Police Chiefs? Of uh, Chiefs of Police, I think, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, so CCAP or something like that. C-A-C-P. And they've got a police chief, and he's the chief of all the chiefs of all the police forces across Canada. Unlike the RCMP, that's different. So we all know the RCMP has a head office in Ottawa as well. <clears throat> I think that's still, uh, no, I'm not going to say the name either. I, I, I know who it is. Um, send him notice and address it right to him. He's the head honcho. You're the head honcho of your organization, aren't you? Well, I, don't, I only deal with other head honchos, right? I'm not going to walk into the RCMP station in Selkirk and give it to the lady at the front counter and say, here you go, and expect that when I walk, you know, drive out to BC that they're going to have notice out there. I mean, yeah, okay, notice the agent to notice the principal, but let's be realistic here. It's better to always send it to the top guy. And that also lets them know you're not really afraid of them, too. I kind of like that, too. You're like, hey, you know, I'm right here. You know, come and get me. Here's my fee schedule. What are you going to do? So send it to them. CCAP, RCMP. Now that they've got notice, you may want to send one to the Governor General for, uh, not the Governor General, sorry, the Attorney General for Canada, and maybe to the Attorney Generals of uh, the provinces across Canada. That, that's going out of the way. I don't think you really have to do that, but be my guest. You know, there's no such thing as giving too much notice. Especially if you travel a lot. Especially if you travel a lot. Or if you don't travel a lot, but you find you're going to be going to, to Alberta or Saskatchewan uh, sometime in the near future. Oh, well, I'm going to go out there. You know what? I think it's just polite if I give everybody notice out there. I'm coming. And then I've got a fee schedule. I've got my own plate. And I'm just going to be, you know, nice and, and, do, and do my due diligence. So, because there is some responsibility on here as well to let other vessels out there and other organizations know you're going to be out and about in the commercial world and doing your thing. Anything else anybody can think of? Great, drop me a line, let me know what you did. I'd love to hear. Um, I think that wraps that up though, really, like there's no one else to really give notice to. Before you do this, you may want to read and understand Queen's Bench rules and procedure. You don't want to make a threat you can't follow up on. I've done it. And then you go, shit. Now I gotta go learn that real quick. Cause I just threatened to do that and I got no freaking clue how to do that. So, so know it all in advance. Made a big deal, you gotta drive with a plate and license for another two, three months. You've been doing it for what, 15 years already? You know, don't speed. Ooh, that's not hard. You don't have to do some, you know, this stuff overnight. So get accustomed to Queen's Bench rules and procedures. So you, at least you have an idea of how to start a claim in Queen's Bench once you now have a claim to take there. And then at the side of the road, you can say, you know, hey, uh, public servant, just so you're aware, um, I'm going to be swearing out affidavits of everything that happened, and I'm going to be filing a claim against you on Queen's Bench. That'll have an impact. You know, at that point, it's up to them. You, know, you can choose to, to proceed with whatever you're doing. Everything <coughs> that now happens is your choice. And you're, you can, you're free to make any choice you want in life but you're not going to escape the liability of your actions, and I'll see that. That's a really nice, polite way of saying that, and it sounds kind of good too. They, they probably won't like to hear that a whole lot. So, aside, that's all I really got written down, actually, because aside from that, it just actually comes down to your handling of the situation once you're actually pulled over by a cop or check stop, or wherever you are. And uh, now that we know the Highway Traffic Act only applies to somebody performing a function of government, as per their own rules and regulations, it makes sense. I only have jurisdiction over anything performing business as me. It's no different for, for them, because we know the Canadian government's not a government, they're actually a foreign corporation. We've extended a privilege to them of being here operating on our soil. So, when I find a way to revoke that privilege, I'll I'm let you guys say, know. How can you <laughs> Well, all these corporations do business here, right? Walmart's got uh, Walmart's got stores here. Coke's got stores here. Stores here. They don't have jurisdiction over you anymore, and the government does. But if you went and got a Walmart card and went shopping in Walmart, well, Walmart's probably got some say over the policies of how you use that card and what you do when you're in their store, right? It's no different. You just got to keep thinking that that's actually what's going on. 
So when you get pulled over, you know, uh, uh, don't get me wrong, it's not like police don't have any jurisdiction over you. If you've actually harmed somebody and they've got a lawful warrant, or you've been breaching the peace, yeah, no amount of talking is going to get you out of that if you're going to jail. And that's why we keep saying every time when we get together, and we'll keep doing it for, for the camera, nothing, nothing that is being taught online is going to get you out of a charge where you've harmed somebody. And that's where the whole honor system comes down. You've got to conduct yourselves honorably in society, right? So, <coughs> do no harm. Because once there really is an injured party coming against you, you will be held accountable. So when a cop pulls you over, uh, so, I mean, think of new things to say to these people. The possibilities are endless, but one you want to get out of the way real quick is, you know, uh, you know, uh, excuse me, uh, public servant, peace officer, I don't care what you want to call him. Did you observe me breach the peace? Right? Well, no, license registration. Well, hang on, no. So you didn't observe me breach the peace? Okay, well, are, um, are, you, are, you, are you claiming that I'm a public servant? Well, that's a very dicey one for them now. Now you're starting to narrow down. Now you haven't breached the peace. And as soon as they answer that question, well, they gotta, they got to prove their claim if they're claiming you're a public servant, right? That's why they really want you to produce that ID. They need you to testify against yourself. And they're usually going to say no, because probably most of them don't even know what that means. But after they say that, you have a little argument. You say, well, I'm sorry, I don't have ID because I'm, I'm not an agent of the government. They're probably going to go back to their car and they're going to call the Crown. Because they're writing everything down, they're recording everything they're going to call, and they're going to say, well, I told him, you know, this guy asked me if I thought he's a public servant. I said no, and then he said he doesn't have government ID because he's not an agent of the government. Well, he's going to get some very special instructions probably on how to proceed very carefully now not to harm your human rights. And then just go from there and just kind of wing it. But don't ever make statements or testify against yourself or anything, right? You want to keep it short and sweet to the point. Say, am I under arrest? Right? That's another thing. I, I, I wanted to use that one. I, I've never used it yet. And it's basically when they come up to the window and you say, well, you know, hello, uh, peace officer, am I under arrest? And they'll be like, no. You know, license registration. It's like, well, if I'm not under arrest, uh, I'm, I'm free to go? No, you're not. Oh, so I'm under arrest. No. Oh, then I'm free to go? Well, you know, and just back and forth. Arrest me or, or let me go. But it's only going to be one of the two. The reason they won't arrest you is they can't. They've got no jurisdiction yet. They don't want to go because they're not, they're not finished intimidating you to try to get you to testify against yourself. So you're, you're your own worst enemy. You're going to do it all to yourself. So that's the, the, the greatest part about it is uh, no, no one's really harming you but yourself when you're out there. And just get educated. And once your once your mind is the, the weapon you need when you get pulled over, it's going to be a lot more fun. And start proving damages too. Like when they get pulled over, say, you know, just so you're aware, hand them a copy of the fee schedule. So just so you're aware, here's a certified copy of the fee schedule in place between myself and the province. I'm not danger to the government. You're damaging me, right? You got to give notice of damages. You, you're damaging me right now as we speak, and this is what the damages are. And then I told you guys a story just like, like a week and a half ago with uh, my brother there that uh, they claimed to have a, a warrant for him for, uh, for assault, for, for politely removing somebody from his property who was trespassing. And he refused to go speak to the, to the RCMP and testify against himself. And said, no, if you got a charge, come out and bring it to me. If you got a warrant, come out and give me the, the, the warrant. You know, whatever you guys got, you can, you can fax it to me, you can send it to me. They refused. They wouldn't send him anything. So they ended up pulling him over on a routine traffic stop where they routine where they pulled his you know license plate number and got his name and decided to pull him over and put the gloves on and oh yeah this is gonna be fun we want this guy and just from simple questions like that like are you claiming I'm a public servant like no and they're like well we have a warrant for your arrest and he goes well good where's the warrant well obviously we don't have it here and well that that sounds like a you problem and not a me problem right like I gave you guys ample opportunity to provide me with a warrant you know this isn't the time or the place to be doing it at the side of the road. Kind of thing, they're like, well, get, you know, get out of the truck. Uh, we want to speak to you, kind of thing, right? And he's like, well, you know, uh, no, thank you. You know, you, you have no jurisdiction over me. If you want me to get out of the truck, I'm sorry, I don't work for free. Is the government, is the guy going to produce a labor contract on the spot where you agree to to do what a cop says at the side of the road for for four bucks an hour? No. Okay. Well, if you want me to get out, that's going to cost you. That's that's what he told me. He says, well, if you want me to get out of my truck and stand there, it's going to cost you fifty thousand bucks. 
And the cops go, okay, yeah, whatever, whatever. Say, okay, whatever. He gets out, he stands right there and he says, okay, that's going to be 50,000 bucks. Now what do you want? I need you in the back of the car while I write up this, uh, while, I, while, I get, while I print up this friggin' uh, promise to appear, write up a promise to appear. He's like, no, no, I didn't agree to get out of the car. I agreed to get out of the truck and stand right here. If you want me in the back of your car, it's going to cost a million. One million. And again, the cop's like, if you don't get in the back of my car, I'm going to arrest you and throw you in there. And he goes, well, you, you can do that. Because you don't have my consent. And it's still going to cost you a million bucks. He's like, oh, fuck, fuck, I can't stay there then. He walks away, you know? <laughs> I'm on the phone, I'm listening to this, and I'm, I'm kind of coaching him on what to say a little bit. So, like, because that's first hand knowledge. And I'm like, <clears throat> I'm kind of laughing. I'm like, oh man, he might really get arrested here. This is great. <laughs> so, but no, he came back with the promise to appear and uh, made him sign it. And that's when he signed in his own way, you know, letting him know he's not a public servant, which the cop already admitted to. And it's an, it's it's going to happen. You're going to get pulled over if you try to grab another plate. So, uh, hopefully, you've been to court a couple of times and you've gotten over the fear of a cop who's going to threaten to arrest you if you don't comply with his orders when you're not obligated to obey his orders. You're obligated to obey court orders, not his. Maybe talk a bit about conditional acceptance <clears throat> when, you're, when they're threatening you at that point. You know what? I understand the conditional acceptance Properly. is it's correct, but people want to get too drawn out into the conversation, you know, like uh, that's the, some of the creditors and commerce kind of stuff, right, with, well, I conditionally accept your offer on the condition that you accept my offer, that uh, you accept the condition that, uh, you know, and you go on about eight sentences longer, and none of you know what the hell either one's talking about now. That's just confusing, right? What you could do is just, again, keep it simple, keep it very simple. If you want to do conditional acceptance, say, I conditionally accept your offer. Or here's another one, your Well, on the condition you can prove that there's a contract between our two parties. Well, just to go back to your story right there with your uh, brother there when he said like, so, like get out of the car. It's like okay, I'll stand right here, but it'll cost you. Five, 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 that five, is five, conditional. Five, acceptance. That's, that's conditional me, without acceptance. actually saying yeah, it. That is true. conditional acceptance. Yeah. I will get out of the truck, yeah. but it's going to cost you fifty thousand. Do you agree to that? That is conditional acceptance without actually oh, saying it, right? If you want me to do that, I don't work for free because I'm pretty sure they got rid of involuntary servitude now you're a couple of decades ago, at least last week. Yeah, they for sure got rid of slavery like maybe a week ago. So involuntary servitude against the law, I, you can't force me to do anything for free. You can force me to do something, but it's not going to be free, dude. It's going to cost you a million dollars if you're going to force me into the back of your car. Do you, cons do you accept that? Now you're the one asking them if they accept. Do you accept my offer that it's going to cost you a million dollars, whether I get in the back of your car voluntarily or whether you force me to? Because if I wind up in the back of your car, it doesn't matter how it happened. It's going to be a million bucks. That's conditional acceptance. That's the proper way to do that. That's why I don't like the, you know, I conditionally accept your offer on the condition that you did, you know, da, 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 and you just sound like a dancing monkey out there, and the guy's just going to be, what the, what, what the hell are you talking about? You know, as he's reached, putting his gloves on and reaching for the pepper spray. <laughs> right? So that's notice. Hey, I'll get out of my truck, not a problem. But I'm not doing it for free. How much is your bond worth? Say that. Say, you, you know, you feel lucky today, what's your bond worth? Don't say that, obviously, you don't want to get the side of the road, but you don't say anything, okay, you don't say anything well, you want. I do, yeah. I really do. It just sounds good, yeah, you know, sometimes things like that are just fun to say. Okay, um, yeah. So other than that, uh, when all that fails and you wind up in jail, then we fall back on our courtroom tactics, which we haven't really covered yet. We're going to have a special, actual, um, scheduled courtroom tactics and what to say and when and the, the three times I stumbled on it and then didn't even realize what I had done when I was when they brought me before a magistrate and I didn't realize what was going on and all I did was I said to the magistrate, you know, like because I refused to give my name after three days in jail or something like that and they brought me before a magistrate. Uh, you no, know, this is on the end. This is after this is on about tw hour twenty eight, and the cops were doing this. Well, we think we think he's this guy and blah 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 and they're doing their you know their their train monkey stuff and um, then they give their whole spiel and. This guy was doing this in contravention of the Highway Traffic Act and yada yada, and they stop, and then the magistrate says, okay, well, whoever you are, what's your name? And the first thing I said is, well, I said, I'm sorry, uh, again, there's been no charge for me to answer to. I'm not